Welcome back to the channel. So today I'm going to talk about the Zeiss Batis 25mm lens. A couple of weeks ago I made a video about the Otis line, optical perfection. That's what they call this lens. This thing is a heavy beast. It manual focus only, weighs a ton. And as I mentioned in that video, it was all about getting the best from a lens, no compromise. This one's a little different. This was designed when Sony launched. Well, since they launched, they already had mirrorless out, but they wanted something that was good quality before they started making their own lens. And if you realize, a lot of the early Sony lens were labeled Sony Zeiss. This Batis line was specifically Zeiss only. Now, the cool thing about these, they're on a price side, I guess, at the time. They're not too bad, but they only have, I think it was four or five, so 18, 25, 50, 85, and 135. And the 85 was the only one at 1 1.8. This is the F2 lens. So it's not a bad lens overall, and the quality from it, I like it. Um, since I started utilizing it, I've been doing it for my last three or four videos that you've been watching. It's either been on the Sony camera or the Nikon camera. You've been seeing these talking in videos. This is the lens that was being used. I didn't talk about it much because I was still kind of trying to get used to it. And I wanted to put it to the test with the Nikon 17 to 28. Now this lens, I bought a few months back and it's pretty nice for something that I can take around and vlog with. I picked up this lens. It's 2.8, I like the quality eight, and I would say from what I'm seeing, they look pretty close. But let me have you guys take a look at the videos that I shot with both of these lens so you can see, and you can compare and let me know in the comments area, what do you think about this? Which one looks better? Is there a difference? Okay, so watch this and then we'll come back. So when Zeiss talk about their lens, there are a couple of things that they talk about. 3D pop, sharpness, and true colors. And one of the things they mention is that there's a T-star coating, they call it, on the lens to kind of allow more light to come in, give you better contrast, that 3D pop that's supposed to separate your subject from the background. If you saw the last video, I took some pictures of my wife and you can see at 1.4, she stood out from the background. It was a really nice look. Sharp for she is in a plane of focus, but the fall off is so, um, so smooth. It gives that medium format look. And a couple of people commented in the video and in person that, yeah, this lens will actually kind of give that medium format look. Not the 25, but the uh, 55. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support the channel, there are links for items to purchase in the description area of each video. In the video, you can see there's more contrast. And I think in the photos, they're kind of close. And of course, it depends on lighting situations. I did notice that when I shot with about it. So even the 55, that um, whatever my settings were, I had to... Um, basically lighten up the other lenses. So if I had like say one 200 of a second, I would have to go like one 1 of a second because the Zeiss lens didn't let a bit more light. It's just, you know, you couldn't shoot at exactly the same setting because one would look brighter than the other. One other thing I noticed, you know, like some of the new Nikon lens, it has a screen up here that when it turns on, 
it has a distance information in there. You can switch it from feet or meters, so that's a cool thing. It's all electronic, so you can't manually switch the um, aperture. Everything is done in camera. The focus ring is rubberized just like the one on the Otis, or Otos, I should say, and it's very smooth. So for manual focusing, it, it works pretty well. I, I like both of these lenses, but this one isn't a direct connection. This one is electronic, while the Otis is a direct manual connection, and you can twist it. There is a stop on either end. This one, it just round and round and round and round. Much like most of the newer Sony lenses, that's how it works. I like the look, and the photos give you some stuff. I didn't go too crazy with this one, but I wanted to show you a few things. I did some outside shots and some indoor shots, so um, let me show you those, and then we'll talk about them. Now, these one that I'm showing you that are inside the mall, I wanted to shoot. It was, you know, Chinese New Year, Lunar New Year, and I basically walked around and took some images just to see what this lens was like. And I, this lens spent a lot of time on the camera, on the Nikon with the FTZ adapter, because even though I have the FX30, I, I kind of, you know, leave it for this kind of talking edge stuff. When I'm recording, the air conditioning is off, it runs with the fan, no avoiding issues. But what I'm getting from it, it's just, it looks really nice and really crispy. I want to do some testing with the FX30 as well, but I think maybe I'll leave that with another video. You've seen the talking edge stuff and it looks, you know, pretty decent. Now, what you're watching, with me talking right now is the 16 to 35 f4 and i'm going to switch over to the 25 bodies so you can see what it looks like the video side now i wanted to do some video and test out the features red i've been playing around and trying out the um the new features that were added to the z8 as far as the iso is concerned but when you're recording analog so that low side enough um all the way down to ISO 200 at low two. I wanted to check out the raw settings with the N-Log and see how it looked and test it with both LEDs. I'm gonna play this back for you guys so you can take a look and then we'll come back and we'll talk about it some more. So from those examples, I tried to get the exposure to be pretty well matched for, for both of them. Now, granted, I kept the setting the same and I did some color grading and brought them down to a level where they looked, you know, pretty much at the same level. Because as I mentioned earlier on, when you do exactly the same level, the light differences are there. So I tweaked them in Resolve to kind of give them the same level eyeballing it, but one maybe slightly brighter than the other one and you guys can tell me in the comments area what do you think is it worth it to get this lens or is the nikon lens doing its job i think the contrast is there the micro contrast is there as far as you know when you look at stuff and look a little bit sharper that's what i like about the lens it's close to the otus but it's not at the same level the otus is just like next level stuff you know, if I could get a lens that's not too heavy from Nikon, cool, I take it. But, you know, to get this kind of optical quality, usually you have to have better glass, better code ends, and these things tend to end up being heavy. I played with John's 135. That thing is awesome. I would say that it also gives that medium format look, that planner. It's a really nice lens, it's not too heavy, and it's autofocus. That's a big plus. I thought about picking up some more Zeiss lens, 
Um, I can't find any more batteries. I would like to get more on those lines because they are autofocus. And, you know, not that I'm complaining about my Nikon lens because I do love my 20 for the 120. I think it's an awesome lens. But what I've realized is that you can kind of get similar look from similar cameras from this new software that I'm using and it's called DSO, sorry, DxO Photo Lab or Photo Lab, I think it's version seven now. I've been testing it and playing around with it for some edits and I like how it look and I can, you know, choose different uh, film simulation as well as camera profiles to emulate like Leica's and Hasselblad and so on. And, you know, I've been bouncing ideas off of John. John Ishii, you guys probably seen his videos, is our YouTube site and on the live streams. But, uh, yeah, he couldn't tell the difference. You know, he thought I bought a Hasselblad or maybe a Leica because I was using those profiles and they were just like looking pretty much the same as far as the colors were concerned. So there are some things they can do as far as tweaks to kind of make them look similar. If you guys want to know more about that software, if you're interested in it, let me know and I'll do a video about it. But yeah, it, it's pretty cool. Um, right now, you know, I love this lens. I love the Zeiss lens. Should I pick up some more? I'm tempted because there's a sale here compared to what I'm seeing on b &H, but they're all manual focus. And these suckers are heavy to carry around. If you're looking for an autofocus lens to go on your Nikon camera that is Zeiss, that's not too expensive, look at Sony's Batis lines. And again, you can use the FT, sorry, the E, what was it called, ETZ? The Megadap, E2Z adapter, this thing right here. And you can connect your Sony lens on here and mount it on an icon camera. That makes things easier. Some of you out there are probably looking at this video and you know thinking about coming to Nikon and you realize that, hey, I can use my Sony lens. Yes, you can. And if you own some Zeiss, oh yeah, they work very well on the Nikon camera. So you're not gonna be missing out on anything. Thanks for watching the video, everyone. If you have any questions, put them in the comment section. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.